Private jet travel tips for business travelers. And that's probably why you've landed here. You want to find out what these tips are. Welcome to Budget TV. My name is Fabrizio Pauli. I'm your aviation advisor. I'm here to help you and give you some tips here on private jet travel. And uh, I'm also the author of The Quantum Economy. My new book just came out a few weeks ago. You can click on the link below. This is all about business and entrepreneurship of the future. If you are an entrepreneur and you need to travel for business, you need to read this book because there's lots of packed with information in here. Also, the story of a number of business people that built their businesses. And one of the key tools that used in building their business was a private jet. So lots of content there. But let's get into to the tips for today. So um, first of all, you need to understand, uh, and you probably know this and figured this out, that flying by private jet is a lot more expensive than flying with the airlines. But how more expensive is it? Well, if you calculate, it's about 15 times more expensive than flying first class. That's stat number one. And most people figured that one out. Stat number two, which not people know about, and I talk about it in my book, The Quantum Economy, and explain why, and I'll briefly explain that to you here, is the fact that private jet travel is actually almost 10 times more dangerous than flying with the airlines. Yes, you're paying 15 times more money to get on an airplane and risk your life 10 times more than if you were flying with Delta, British Airways, Lufthansa, and Ritz, you name it. So... Why on earth would someone fly by private jet if it's costing so much more money and they're risking their life? Well, private jet travel can actually be a lot safer as well, um, depending on how the pilots are trained, the maintenance and, and lots of other factors. Uh, but, you know, um, that's an important thing to consider. But when you are looking to charter a private jet, um, you have to think to yourself that you're actually chartering time. You're, you're buying time. So how do you buy time? Well, first of all, uh, private jets can fly in and out of a lot more airports than the airlines do. I mean, in the United States, for example, uh, there are about 500 airports which are serviced by the airlines, um, while there are about 10,000 airports you can land at with a private jet. Now, some of these airports are unpaved runways, so only certain types of private jets can land at them. Uh, but um, otherwise, it's about 5,000 paved runways, 10,000 if you count the unpaved runways as well. And then you've got also all the private airstrips uh, add those to, to the list. So there's lots and lots more options. So there may be an airport uh, uh, closer to your house or closer to your company. You could leave from there. There may also be an airport closer to where you're having your meeting. And so that's going to save you a lot of time uh, traveling by car and stuff like that or having to maybe charter a helicopter, which will save you some money. So you want to kind of take off and land as close as possible to your house on one end and to your meeting on the other. Uh, and so that's convenience there. And that's why I say you're buying time. And time also means, you know, reliability of, the, of whoever you're going to be using. Is the airplane reliable? Are the pilots reliable? Is the company that runs those airplanes, are they reliable? Make sure this airplane is going to stay in the air and not break down. Uh, and this is important. The other thing is you have to consider what type of airplane you're going to charter. And that will depend on where you're going and how many people are traveling. Now, bear in mind that private jets cater for about anywhere from one to about seven to eight people, depending on the length of the flight and, and, and how big the airplane is. Now, uh, a lot of people will say, oh, yes, you can charter my Goldstream G550 or my uh, Global 7500 and you can carry 14 passengers from Los Angeles to London and off you go. But what you don't realize is that these airplanes, the galley of these airplanes doesn't cater for large numbers of people. I mean, ideally, you want about six people on one of these larger private jets on a long distance flight. If you're going to charter a, a large airplane, like maybe a G550 and do a, I don't know, Las Vegas to Dallas, then you can put 12, 14 people on there because it's not a long flight uh, and off you go. So this is something that has to be considered as well. And don't think you can carry 25 suitcases, again, depending on the number of passengers and that. So that's something you have to consider. What type of airplane do I need for my flight? Some people don't like to fly in the smaller airplanes. So even if it's just one or two people and it's short distance, they won't go and charter a Honda Jet or a Phenom 300, for example. They would much prefer a larger, I don't know, uh, Goldstream G200 or Falcon 2000, uh, which obviously is going to cost more money. But some people just don't like the small spaces. Other people don't care. Uh, they'll go in a small airplane and off they go. And they'll even charter a small airplane um, that hasn't got much range, but they'll, you know, have it stop somewhere, refuel and then go. Uh, everybody's got their needs and everybody's got different tastes and requirements and, and things like that. So these are things you have to consider. So there's certainly the flexibility of the private jet and that um, is 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 a factor and flexibility at the time. Uh, and then you've got to, as I said, you know, consider the size, depending on the type of flight you're going to be doing. Uh, when you're going to charter a private jet, I would always advise using someone like myself. Um, you can reach out to me and I can 
uh, tune into your needs and find the right airplane for the, the flight that you need to do. Um, it's always best to use somebody that you can trust that understands the whole aviation makeup and, and understand, you know, which carriers are safe and which aren't. Um, you have to be very, very careful. Some of these companies out there uh, that are branded and advertised in all the magazines aren't exactly safe. Um, I won't name any by name, uh, but you have to just be careful. Just because the brand's out there doesn't mean it's safe. Um, so again, you need to talk to somebody with, on the inside track to make sure that, you know, you're going to be stepping onto an airplane that's going to get you from A to B. Um, and not leave you on the side of a mountain <laughs> in, in between kind of thing. So this is really, really important. Uh, now, how does booking happen? Uh, the booking happens uh, and the airplane is actually booked when the flight has been paid for. You can pay by credit card. You can pay by bank transfer, cryptocurrency. Some of these carriers do accept crypto. You pay Bitcoin or Ethereum and that. Usually the most popular ones. Um, if you're going to pay by credit card, there usually is a charge. So if it's suddenly a Saturday and you have to book and the banks are shut, um, then you might want to transfer some crypto if they accept crypto or ask them to keep a, a block on your credit card and then you'll wire the money on Monday. Um, that's also a way of doing it. Uh, there are usually everything is included. Things like de-icing and, and the internet is usually excluded. De-icing sometimes is necessary. Um, and so, you know, that will have to be paid for and it also may be a delay on the flight. But believe me, it's important. Um, if you haven't seen any of the accident reports that I've done here on BizJet TV, uh, you can see how many accidents happen because the pilots didn't de-ice. So if your flight's going to be delayed by an hour because the pilots are de-icing the airplane, they're keeping you safe. And so that's really, really important to bear that one in mind. As far as the Internet's concerned, it's always best to download anything you want to watch on the flight before you get on the flight. Uh, you don't want to start downloading stuff in the air because, you know, you'll rack up quite a bill <coughs> as far as um, your Internet usage is concerned. Uh, even though the internet is getting cheaper and cheaper on private jets, and now a lot of uh, different companies are starting to subscribe to Elon Musk's um, internet connection with the satellite, and uh, that obviously is bringing the cost down. But, you know, you need to ask if that's included or not. So that's that's important. Uh, but, you know, private jet travel is, is on the increase. And just uh, new news is that Mr. Warren Buffett and his company NetJets uh, have just invested a further $5 billion to acquire 250 uh, Embraer Praetor 500 aircraft. So they're increasing the fleet. They're putting a lot more money into private aviation. And, you know, Warren Buffett knows what he's doing investment wise and that. So he's putting money into this. So this is, you know, becoming the way to travel in particular for business and even for leisure if you can afford it. Um, in certain countries, you can write off everything, all your business jet travel, um, even some of your leisure travel. If you play it right, you can write it off as a business expense, um, even if you're chartering or leasing or buying. Um, so there's lots of things you can do here so that's kind of my my advice there if you're going to be traveling by private jet um those are the tips for you for the day remember get yourself a copy of the quantum economy if you haven't done so already and you also can click on the link below to get the book but also on the link below there's my articles in avbio magazine uh, lots of content there as well um and uh, here's a copy of avbio magazine i write periodically every month in there i'm doing a whole series right now on private jet owners and how they use private jet to build their business. So that's interesting as well. And some of those stories are in the quantum economy. Now, uh, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to BizJet TV and comment below. And check out this other video I did recently about buying private jets and the 10 tips, uh, things that you need to know before you buy. So check that one out. And that's all from Felicia Party on BizJet TV. And I'll see you on the next one.